I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you have Jacob to help you. I'll, I'll make it fair. Jacob said, "Don't pull me in on this." <laughs> Romans chapter one, and uh, this morning we're gonna start looking at Paul's gospel. And uh, just let me tell you, we've been looking last couple of weeks over God's power to establish the Christian. Now what a lot of people believe today is that you get saved and then you're established by your own power. Yeah. And be people trying to live the Christian life and they never find the key to living the Christian life. The, the key to living the Christian life is understanding you're dead to a bunch of things. Amen. Yeah. That's the key. Paul, Paul never addresses how a Christian is to live, Romans chapter 8, until he first gets the Christian to understand what he's dead to. In Romans 6 and 7. And a man that don't understand what the cross did for him, he can never know the power of the resurrection of Christ until he's first established in what the cross accomplished. Right, right. And, and you know, people miss this. The cross did so much more than just give you forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And this is what we're going to see. But Paul said God's power to establish us uh, was according to three things. He says, first off, my gospel. Not Peter's. And they are different. Amen. We've been looking at this stuff on Wednesday. When Paul preached the resurrection, he told Timothy in 2 Timothy, he said, remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. Well, Peter preached the resurrection, Gary. Yep. But when he preached the resurrection, he said God raised him from the dead to sit him on the throne of his father David. When Paul preached the resurrection, he said that God raised him from the dead, set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, and gave him to be the head over the body, which is the church. Right. The fullness of him that filleth all in all. And so you've got to understand these, these differences. Are both true? Yes. Mm -hmm. One is the gospel for the circumcision. One is the gospel of the uncircumcision. Right. They're different. Yeah. We have two... The church's calling and Israel's calling are different. Mm -hmm. Nowhere is the church called a nation, right. a holy nation or anything. We are one new man in Christ. Mm -hmm. That's what the church is. And so God, God, uh, God establishes us, number one, according to Paul's gospel, the preaching of Jesus Christ according to what? The revelation of the mystery. Kept secret since the world began, but now is made manifest. Yeah. yeah. And so, listen, most preachers don't know that there's a difference between Paul and Peter's gospel, so they're strike one against most churches. Yeah. Most of them don't know that God kept a secret since the world began. That's right. That it was hid in him from the beginning of the world, Ephesians 3 9. And so how can they reveal the mystery which is kept secret when they don't even know there is one? Mm -hmm. And then the last thing Paul says is the scriptures of the prophets. Yep. These are the three things. That's how God establishes you. So like I've been saying, naturally, Bob Jones doesn't have a class that teaches this. You're right. Yep. Nor does Pentecostal Christian School or Dallas Theological Seminary or any of them. And you can go to the bookstore and pick up 10, 15 books on how to build a church and not one of these three principles are going to be mentioned. Amen. And you know what Paul said it was? He said, according to the commandment of the everlasting God made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. Mm -hmm. And so these things, these things are according to God's commandment, Tony. Not, nothing I made up. That's right. Amen. This, is, this came from the throne of God. It was made known to all nations for the purpose of the obedience of faith. Mm -hmm. And you got churches that don't even have any idea what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Sad. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said up here last week, said these guys go to, to Bob Jones and Pensacola and Dallas and all Moody and all these places. Said called to preach my foot. They're called to preach, they're, they're called to waste mommy and daddy's money, is what they're called to do. Amen. Mm -hmm. And some of them may be called to preach and then they get there and the school ruins them. Yeah. I don't know what it is. But what I'm telling you is we live in a, in a country that has more, more churches than ever before and more ungodliness. Yeah. Yeah. And Paul talks about this in 2 Timothy 
in chapter 3. It's called the mystery of iniquity in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. We're not, we're not, we're not using the God-ordained method to establish people in Christ and in the faith. And say people were lost. I said they're not established. Yeah. And in fact, a lot of people are reprobate concerning the faith. And you see this first one up here? That's, that, that's, that, that's got to be step number one in the establishment of a believer. Mm -hmm. He's got to be established in the, in, in the uh, gospel of Paul. No Christian can be established, truly established by God without first being established in Paul's gospel. Right. And what I'm showing you right now is the root problem of Seventh-day Adventists. You know why Seventh-day Adventists thinks that it matters what day of the week he goes to church on? Do, do, do you know why a fundamentalist will argue him and say, no, it's Sunday. I ought to go to church on Tuesday just to tell both of them to <laughs> go somewhere with it. Do you know why these men argue about this stuff? Because they not understand that through the cross of Christ we're dead from the rudiments of the world. Paul said, why is it? He said, he said, he said, how be it when you, before you knew God, you did service to them which are not gods. He said, but now that you're known of God and have known God, how turn you again to the weak and beggarly elements whereunto you desire again to be in bondage? Ye observe days and months and years. He said, I'm afraid of you, <laughs> lest I bestow labor upon you in vain. Yeah. You think a man in the cemetery cares what day of the week it is? Right. You're crucified with Christ. He that is dead is freed from sin. Paul said, if you be, he said, he said, if you be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, why is no living in the world are you subject to ordinances? Touch not, taste not, handle not. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. This is what Paul's talking about here. <clears throat> this is the root problem of, of Seventh-day Adventists, Jehovah's Witnesses, Roman Catholics. It's the root problem of, of the majority of, of fundamental Baptist churches in America. Is they don't understand Paul's gospel and what Calvary means to us. I showed you last week that when you really go through Romans, what Paul's showing you, when he starts showing you how to overcome sin, he don't tell you what to do. He tells you what to know. Know ye not. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that as many of us as were baptized into Christ were baptized into his death? Mm. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. That the body. Then he comes over into chapter 7 and says, Ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ. You can't live under God by the law. You can't live under God by the rudiments of the world. You can't live under God by the flesh. Yeah. You've got to understand that you're dead to these things that you can truly live under God. As Paul said, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Yeah. Yeah. And the life I now live in the flesh, tell me, Paul, how do you live? By the faith of the Son of God, mm -hmm. who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God. Yeah. I do not frustrate it. If righteousness came by the law, Christ is dead in vain. That means all the righteousness you need was provided at Calvary. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And that's all you need. Yeah. Amen. And we're talking more about forg than forgiveness of sins. Paul's gospel deals with more than just knowing that your sins are forgiven. It is not. And listen, man, this, all this stuff is the key to assurance. Paul said that assurance came from understanding to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of Christ and of the Father. Assurance comes once you understand the fellowship of this mystery that, that Paul's talking about. And so it, it's more than just knowing that your sins are forgiven. It's knowing and applying to your own life by faith what, what, what the cross and the resurrection and the position of Christ accomplished for you. By faith. The just live by faith. From faith to faith. Mm -hmm. A to Z, brother. Mm -hmm. It's not by faith. It don't start with faith. Or even Paul said, how received you the Spirit? By the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Mm -hmm. By faith. He said, are you so foolish having begun in the Spirit? Are you now made perfect by the flesh? Yeah. Yeah. So how are we perfected in Christ? 
by the Spirit through faith. Mm -hmm. Paul said that he would grant you to be strengthened with might by his Spirit in the inner man that Christ may dwell in your heart by faith. It's knowing, listen, I have to know the doctrines. I have to know Paul's gospel and what he preached. And then by knowing and believing these, applying them to my life. As you receive Christ, so walk ye in Him. Important verse. Yeah. And so it's knowing and applying what the cross has accomplished for me. The moment that I believed, Ephesians 1.13, the moment that we believe the gospel <laughs> and trust Christ, we're baptized into His death, we're baptized into His burial, we're baptized into His resurrection, and we're baptized into His heavenly position by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I am now seated at the right hand of the Father in heavenly places. Yeah, that's right. And God hath blessed me. He's not going to. He not, he's, he, I might, Paul. <laughs> God hath blessed us Amen. with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. All the promises of God in Him are what? Yea. And in Him what? Amen. Amen. Everything God promised me in Christ is mine now. It's not a question of if. Paul said, if you're risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth at the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above and not on the things of the earth for you're dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. They're mine. Mm -hmm. I just have to seek them by faith. And so the most important thing for you to do as a Christian is Ephesians, I'll write the verse now, Ephesians 1.17. You see, because I'm, I'm, I'm one with Christ. I'm bone of His bone, flesh of His flesh. Yeah. There's, no, there's no Bill Keener. There's no Paul Lucas. There's no Jew, no Greek. There's no male, no female. There's no poor, no rich, no wise, no unwise, no barbarian. There's none of those things. For ye are all one in Christ. Yeah. And so when I understand this, if I want to know who I am, I need to know who He is. Yeah. Make sense? Mm -hmm. And so Paul said in Ephesians 1.17 that He would grant you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. Yeah. You say, what about that? I know, I know what it takes. Paul said, I've suffered the loss of all things. That's, that's my life verse, Brother Bill. That verse taught me to let go of religion so that I could know Christ. Yeah. A lot of people won't let go of church and they won't let go of religion so that they can know Him. And what Paul says in Philippians, he, 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 said, he said, we are the circumcision which worship God in spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus, having no confidence in the flesh. He said, if any man think he hath whereof to glory, I will. <laughs> he said, but those things that were gained to me, I count of loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I've suffered the loss of all things, and do count it but dumb, that I may win Christ, and be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but the righteousness which is of God by faith, even the righteousness of God which is by faith. Yeah. He goes on to say, he says that I may know him and the power of his resurrection yeah. and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. Mm. That's what it takes, man. Then he told the Philippians, he said, as many as walk as me, he said, as many who walk like this and by this rule, follow them as you have me for an example. Yeah. He said, for many walk, not few, many walk of whom I've told you and now I'll tell you even weeping, they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. Yeah. Whose God is their belly. Whose glory is in their shame. Their haircuts, their clothing, the things that they should be ashamed of, their flesh are the very things they glory in. Paul said their glory is in their shame. They mind earthly things. Whose end is destruction. Mm. And something, man, Paul, Paul, Paul was not talking about the prostitute and the and all these, he was talking about the religious men yeah. who, 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 who through their doctrine frustrate and make void the cross of Christ. Paul said, whosoever you or 
are justified by the law, you're fallen from grace. Christ is of no effect unto you. Yeah. If I can live it, the cross is pointless. Amen. I can't live it, so I have to die so that He can live in me. Amen. And this is what the Christian life is about. We're established by the gospel, not anything else. What Paul says here in Romans chapter 1, I mean, I ain't got going yet, Gary. <laughs> but see, it, it, it's by knowing Him and our union to Him that we truly learn how to live unto God. Mm -hmm. This is what Paul refers to as the mystery of godliness in 1 Timothy 3.16. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the Spirit. He was seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. This is the mystery of the faith he was talking about. He was talking about the deacons and the bishops that are holding the mystery of the faith. And he was talking about, when he talks about the mystery of godliness, what he's showing you there is what brought true godliness into the world was through what Christ accomplished. And it's only by our union to Him and what He done that godliness can truly come. And when you pervert doctrine, Paul wrote about men who err concerning the truth. And he said, Shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. He says over in 2 Timothy 3.5, he said, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such turn away. These are religious men who look and act just like the real thing. But they deny the true power of godliness, which is our union to the Lord Jesus Christ. They teach it through works of the flesh and through religion. And all it leads to is a form or a show of wisdom. Colossians chapter 2. It's not real. Satan, but listen, man, do y'all believe Satan's real? Yeah. Boy, I believe it. Amen. I believe the Bible when he says he deceives the whole world. I believe that. And when the Bible says that he appears as an angel of light, I believe that too. Sure. And when the Bible says that his ministers transform themselves into the ministers of righteousness, I believe that too. And when the Bible said that they would speak doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, I believe that. Amen. And so you say, how do you judge it? Any man that tries to corrupt your minds from the simplicity that's in Christ is a devil. Yes. Yeah. Eve had one commandment. Don't eat and you'll live. And Satan beguiled her from that simplicity. And Paul said, I fear lest as the serpent beguiled Eve, so your mind should also be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Mm -hmm. What is the simplicity of Christ? Faith. Believe that He died for you. Believe that He's risen from the dead and seated at the right hand of the Father. And by faith you have access to everything freely in Him. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just believe it and go, go seeking it, man. Believe those. And that's, that's simple. Religion confuses it. Mm -hmm. Not God. Any religion, folks, that, that, that tries to blind you to these great truths is called the mystery of iniquity which exalts itself above the knowledge of God. The mystery of iniquity is leading to what's, what's eventually going to take place is a man is going to be manifested that sits on the throne of God and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped. Yep. Now, the, 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 the spirit that's behind bringing this, that's eventually going to lead to this manifestation of, of, of a man, Paul calls in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 when he talks about the weapons of our warfare. He said, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself above the knowledge of God. That's any man who will get up behind the pulpit and say, I believe we're saved by grace, but mm. he, there he goes, exalting himself above the knowledge of God. Yeah, right. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. And if you can't see it, I, I, I don't know, I don't know what to say. Uh, you, 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 better, you better get to a point where you can discern these things. As Paul said, he that is spiritual judge of all things. Well, I can spot a liar a mile away when it comes to this book. <laughs> Couldn't always. But I, I, but I mean the truth of God is important, folks. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman. It's not a game. You don't just get to get up and foam at the mouth and talk about abortion and 
you know, some right wing politics and think that you've done something for God. God's wisdom is so much higher than the Republicans or Democrats, they can't find him. Amen. We've got to search this stuff out, study these things, and God will equip us through the wisdom that he's ordained for us in the Lord Jesus Christ. I hear preachers all the time. Douglas Stauffer. trouble now here. Yeah. Douglas Stauffer rewrote, a, rewrote his book on rightly dividing. He added about 500 pages to it. 500 pages. I guess he had to get something in there for everybody. Oh yeah. But he's completely gone back on, on the Hebrew epistles being for the Jews in the tribulation period. <laughs> Watch him fumble around with James now. Faith without works is dead. Yeah. That's fine, brother. How many works do I have to have? <laughs> and which works do I need to have? Yeah, yeah. Now, do you know how he tried to justify this? Is that Paul said that they profess that they know God, but in works deny him. That's the exact opposite of what James is talking about. That's how he tried to justify Gary. If Paul, Paul didn't say that because they don't have works, they deny him. They deny, them, deny him by their works is what Paul's talking about. And you get over and read Titus 1.14, what he said was he said, don't give heed to Jewish fables nor commandments of men mm -hmm. who turn from the truth. And then what's he say? He says to the believing, all things are pure. But to the unbelieving, nothing is pure. No, there's not, there's no days of the, that, that sounds more like a fundamentalist than anybody, Gary. <laughs> Nothing's pure, but even their conscience is defiled. They profess that they know God, but in works deny Him. Now what Paul's talking about there, he's not talking about the man that gets saved and still struggles a little bit with his sin. Yeah. Paul's talking about the religious men who profess they know God, but deny Him by what works they do. Let me give you an example. If I say that I believe Christ died for my sins and then offer God a bullock on an altar, I've denied God by my works. Mm -hmm. And I agree with Stoll for 100% that men deny God by their works. Sure. I'll tell you who they are. A man who fights and splits a church over a day of the year is a man that denies God. Yeah. Yeah. These fundamentals, man, they're so holy, brother. Yeah. Nothing's clean, you know. I I don't celebrate Halloween. <laughs> wow, brother. Good for you. <laughs> you know what Paul said? He said, I become all things. I have liberty, brother Gary. Yeah. And I'm going to take that liberty and by love serve one another. Mm -hmm. And I become all things to all men that I may by all means win some. Yeah. And the one day of the year that the lost come knocking on my door, I'm going to turn the light out. Yeah. Say, nope. Now, if they come knocking on my door, I'm going to roll up a chick track, mm -hmm. pop it in the bag, and then throw them some candy and tell them, Jesus loved you and died for your sins. Have a good day. <laughs> He's holier than thou. God said, they say, He said, they're a stench in my nostril. Mm -hmm. these, 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 these men will split, split people up over food and clothing and all these things. I agree. They profess they know God, but in works deny Him. This, this stuff, they're not established in the Gospel of Paul. They are reprobate. As Paul said, they resist the truth. Reprobate to every good work. Reprobate concerning the faith. Amen. So the Christian life, look at Romans. Uh, <laughs> Romans chapter 1. Is that the only chapter in Romans? Uh, Is that the only chapter in Romans? <laughs> Romans chapter 1. He says, listen, the, the Christian life is first understanding our relationship to the cross and how it relates to the world, to sin, how, how, how the cross relates to our old man and the law. 
Once we understand these relationships to God, when you don't understand these relationships, I'm not saying these fundamentalists are lost, folks. What I'm telling you is they've denied, denied the true power of godliness. They have a form of it in their churches, and they'll even feign love. But when you truly get in trouble, you'll see how much they love you. <laughs> their churches are full of, of, of envy, wrath, they don't have drunkards and, and harlots in them. So let's get that out of the way. We've established that. They're God's gift to the world when it comes to not drinking. But these men are plummied up with variance. You know what variance is? It means it's like a chameleon who changes from one person to the next. Emulations. Em emulate means to act like somebody else. And, and these churches, that, that, that's proof of the works of the flesh. They still have envy, division. When Paul said, he said, I couldn't speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ, for whereas there is among you, he didn't say, for whereas there is among you uh, 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 adultery and fornication, he said, whereas there is among you envy, strife, and contention, are you not carnal and walk as men? Mm -hmm. If there's envy and strife and contention within a church, it's because they haven't developed the spiritual mind. The spiritual mind brings us into the unity of the faith yeah. and brings us into one mind. So as long as there's still division, amen? Listen, you go to 15 independent Baptist churches, they're all preaching something different. Mm -hmm. And that's why there's so many of them today. Because you have a division, you just go start another church. Mm -hmm. That's not the unity of the Spirit. That Paul talks about in Ephesians chapter 4. And so once we understand these relationships, we can know the power of His resurrection. And next week, when we, when we really get into this thing deeper, we're going to, I'm going to show from Ephesians chapter 3 that it comes in three parts. This power of, of His resurrection. You're strengthened first in your inner man. Christ begins to dwell in your hearts by faith. And then once you begin to comprehend the fullness of these things, you begin to be filled with all the fullness of God. Ephesians 3.20. And then this is this is the power of true godliness. All right, Romans 116. Let's point out a few things here and I'll, I'll be done for this morning. He says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. I'm not either. You know why I'm not ashamed? It's God's power. Yeah. I, I, did, I didn't discover this power for many years in my Christian life because men were blinding me. This is why Paul said, he said, man, when I preached to you, I didn't preach with the enticing words of man's wisdom so that your faith wouldn't stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Mm -hmm. And so I, 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 you have to understand that this, 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 this wisdom that God ordained for us, it's yours, Bill, and it's mine. It's not, Paul, Paul said, don't glory in men. Whether Paul or Apollos, all things are yours. He said, Paul and Apollos is yours. Ruckman's yours. The wisdom is yours. And so you don't, you don't have to glory in Ruckman. You don't have to glory in Gip. You glory in the Lord because it's His wisdom. And He's given us men to reveal some of it to us, but no man ever knew it all. Yeah, right. And, and so we got to seek this wisdom out ourselves. But He says, Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God. And I'm not ashamed of it, even though it is foolishness to everybody around me. Yeah. What I believe is foolishness to this world. I believe because a man died 2,000 years ago on a cross and was buried and rose back to the right hand of God that me 2,000 years ago believing that am now crucified, buried, and risen and seated at the right hand of God with him. Yeah. Go out and tell the world that. Watch them. Watch their draw drop. Look at you like you're just the biggest idiot they've ever seen. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But here's the thing. That thing is foolishness to the world. It's foolishness to the po to politicians. It's foolishness to religion. Amen. Religion don't believe what we believe. Mm -hmm. Old church history. You know what that means? That means Roman Catholic history. Yeah, right, right. Where, where's this little church going to show up in history, Gary? Where are we going to show up in history? We're here. We 
We've all, this, this little bodies of believers like this have always existed since the time of Paul. By the time Paul's put in prison, you know what he says? He says, they which were of Asia have turned from me. Mm -hmm. Paul dies in prison by himself. And I'll tell you, man, the closer I get to the Lord, the lonelier it gets. But you can have the world, I want Him. Yes. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I ain't looking to me. I've rejected the world and the world's rejected me. What I believe is foolishness to, to them and what they believe is foolishness to me. Amen. I'm crucified to the world. My own flesh and blood family. When I go to the reunion, I'm like, yeah. how you been? That's right. That's right. And that's all we can talk about. Well, see you later. Amen. They talk about NASCAR and, and politics and all this other stuff. And I'm over, I'm over here saying, hey man, let me show you what I learned out of Ephesians chapter 4. They're like, what's Ephesians? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm done. I mean, what's Christ, that? listen, you people are my family now. <laughs> Paul Lucas is dead. I'm not even a Lucas anymore. <laughs> I'm joined to the body of Christ and I'm a member of each person that's in that body. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And we have a head named the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And anybody that exalts itself above his knowledge and his wisdom, I reject on principle. There you go. Yeah. I don't care how holy it looks. I don't care how godly it looks. I reject it if it exalts itself above him. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's the nonsense that's bringing the Antichrist to the world. Paul said, I'm not ashamed. And anybody who truly believes the gospel knows that it is God's power and salvation. Yeah. Look what he says in verse 17. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. That is, the gospel reveals God's righteousness. The only way that God, listen man, God commits murder, right? And there are people out here that think that, that the way you get rid of that is the bring a man up here and give him a bath. How does that make God righteous? Yeah. Well, I know, I know you killed a man, but it's also the same where you know you got your hair wet. So uh, we're good. That canceled it out. <laughs> that doesn't reveal anybody's righteousness. That reveals the lunacy of man. Yeah. But it doesn't reveal God's righteousness. God's righteousness is only revealed in the gospel of His Son. And what this means is, what Paul's saying here is, is it reveals God's the only way that God can justify a sinner and he himself remain righteous. Mm -hmm. yep. mm -hmm. If Christ wouldn't have died, I like what Augustus top lady said. Could my tears forever flow? Could my zeal no longer know? These for sin could not atone. Thou must save and thou alone. Nothing in my hands I bring. Simply to thy cross I cling. Yeah. Amen. Amen. If Christ wouldn't have done what he did 2,000 years ago, you could have wept and snotted and bawled and repented and got baptized and ate the, 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 the sacrament uh, for the next 15 million years and it wouldn't have paid for one sin you had committed. Yeah. Right, right. Amen. God's righteousness is revealed at Calvary. Amen. 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 And it's revealed to them who believe. Romans 10 4, Paul said, Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. When men don't believe, they continue to seek righteousness through their works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But when they truly believe what Christ did, he becomes the end of the law for righteousness. That's why Paul said in Romans 10, you want, you want, you want, you want the Bible's record of religious people? Do you want it? I'll tell you what the Bible says about your religious people. Paul said, he said, Brethren, my prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves into the righteousness of God. Mm -hmm. Did they have zeal? Yeah. Were they sincere? Yeah. Were, were they faithful in what they were doing? You better believe it. But it was all in ignorance. Yeah. And it doesn't matter what 
I believe and what I practice. If it ain't true, I'm going to hell like a bullet when I die. So let me put it to you like this. I'm trusting in Christ, Gary, yeah. and nothing else. Yeah. I'm not even going to do anything else. <laughs> now, as, as, he, as he fills me with his love and his righteousness, it's going to result in me doing some things. Yeah. Because of his righteousness, not mine. Right. But I'm not going to try to, to pollute his righteousness with my own. Yes. Amen. So I'm trusting this completely. Amen. What a man did for me 2,000 years ago before I was born. Mm -hmm. I'm trusting in that. Yeah. And if it ain't true, I'm not going to argue about it. Yeah. If it ain't true, I'm going to hell like a bullet. Yep. And if what they believe ain't true, they're going to hell like a bullet. Because verse 18 says, for the wrath of God is revealed. So God's revealed two things. He's revealed his righteousness and he's revealed his wrath. And man has the choice. Yeah. And he ain't playing games about it anymore. There was a time before Calvary, Acts chapter 17, when God winked at the ignorance of man. Yeah. Man was down here worshiping golden eagles and 50 foot statues of owls and worshiping Zeus and Apollo. And Paul said, at the times of this ignorance, God once winked at. Yeah. Yeah. But now, yeah. commandeth yeah. all men everywhere to repent because he's appointed a day in which he's going to judge the world in righteousness by that man which he hath appointed. Yeah. And Paul in Romans chapter 1, he's going to deal with the Gentiles and how they fell into idolatry. But you know what he says in 2 Timothy chapter 3? The Gentiles in the church age is going to close in that same idolatry. Mm. And I've read the chapters, man. I'm telling you what you're living in. Yep. And it's all because of a rejection of God's righteousness. Man's going to hit the judgment one day and there's going to be sin after sin after sin piled up on his account. And then after it's all said and done, you know what God's going to pile on top of that? rejection of his righteousness yeah. and saying, oh, by the way, you also rejected my righteousness for your own. Mm -hmm. Man's going to be without excuse in this day. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right? Just one, one quick thing. Let me, let me read down to verse 21 and I'll be done. Well, what we're going to be looking at over, over this week, next week, is condemnation in Romans chapter 1 and chapter 2. And what Paul says here, he says, for the wrath of God is revealed against who? This is the reason Paul, if you notice back at the end of verse 17, Paul said the just shall live, not by works, not by deeds, not by religion, or, or he said the just shall live by what? Faith. Moses described the righteousness of the law, the man that doeth those things shall live by them. But Paul said the just shall live by faith. And this is what he says, why? Why? For the wrath of God is revealed. It has to be by faith, Tony, because his wrath is revealed. And this is what Paul, Paul's going to build all the way up to chapter 3 when we get there and show you the answer to these things. But notice what he says. He says, the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against what? All ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Mm. Let me tell you something, man. I say I, I like what Gary put on Facebook, but I thought you were very I thought you were very meek about it, Gary. That guy got mad about it. And, <laughs> but the, but the, 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 listen, man, Paul said he said you can't drink of the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Yep. He said the things they sacrifice unto he said they don't sacrifice to God; they sacrifice unto devils. There are real devilish spirits behind religion, folks. Yes, Amen. Yep. This ain't just somebody being wrong. There are evil dominions and spiritual wickedness behind these religions. And that's why they cover up the fact that they molest children. Yeah, yeah. And rape little kids. These are occultic practices that go back for thousands of years. When Israel started worshiping these pagan gods, it wasn't long still until they started offering their own children in the fire to these gods. And I have no tolerance for it. Right. None. What well, Paul says here, God's wrath is revealed against all of this. He said His wrath is revealed against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men what, what is, who hold the truth and unrighteousness. They're not ignorant. Mm -hmm. Man is not ignorant. I, I believe 
God. Verse 19 and 20, you know what he says? He says, he says the things that are invisible about God are clearly seen. Mm -hmm. I believe that. Where are they seen at? In the creation. What is it? His eternal power in Godhead. Do you believe Neil deGrasse Tyson really believes he came from a monkey? <laughs> or do you believe what God's saying here and that he only believes that so, so that it allows him to have liberty to go in his sexual deviance? I'll tell you what one, what one main scientist said in the late 1800s. He said the reason we accepted Darwin, I believe it was Planck or, or heck or one, he said the reason we accepted Darwin without evidence is because we didn't want God interfering in our sexual mores. Yeah. And that's exactly what Romans chapter 1 says. Mm -hmm. God gave them up to what? Uncleanness. What, what, what God is saying here, the, the world's in the shape that it's in, folks, and we talked about this a little bit in Sunday school. What God has shown man in the creation is that he, His eternal power and Godhead. His divine wisdom. You can't look at this world and not understand that the being who made it is all wise. His wisdom is everywhere. Yeah. In fact, He points to Job. He says, you see that ostrich? Yeah. You see, see how she lays her, her, her egg on top of the sand mm -hmm. and forgets that a foot may crush it? He said, you see her? Job said, yeah, I see her. He said, you know why she don't care for her young? Why? I withheld wisdom from her. Mm -hmm. That means, listen, it goes beyond just God with her. That means every maternal instinct in the natural world among bears, cows, lions, zebras, this maternal instinct is a wisdom given by God. That means you can understand the wisdom of God by observing these things in nature. Man's without excuse, folks. Yeah. And I look at what he says. This is what led to the downfall of the Gentiles. And I'm really done right here. Because that, when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God. Neither were thankful. Let God be true and every man a liar. Man's going to get his day in court with God. Yeah. Not me. <laughs> I took the chickens highway. <laughs> I took the chickens highway. Amen. And everybody else is going to get their day in court. <laughs> when In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by that man whom he hath appointed. By yeah. Jesus, according to my gospel, Romans 2, 16, who will render to every man according to his deeds. And man's going to, man's, God's going to be in judgment too. The, the Bible, well, it's going to be Jesus Christ. Because all judgment's been committed to the Son. But He's going to sit there that day on that great white throne, and man is going to enter into contention with Him. That's right. Amen, preacher. Yep. And they're going to be judging Him. But Paul said in Romans 3, 4, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings and overcome when thou art judged. Talking about God. You know what Job said? He said, if he were to contend with me, I couldn't answer him one of a thousand. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so I took the chicken's eye away here. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> I've, oh, I've got excuses for, for the things I've done in my mind. Mm -hmm. Paul talks about it. Their thoughts meanwhile accusing or else excusing. I go through life and I, I, something from my past comes up in my mind and I try to beat it out of there and I'm like, yeah, but you know, what you need to understand is what you know. <laughs> no. It ain't going to happen. <laughs> you, don't know, you know what that man went through? Yeah. And without sin? Mm -hmm. And then not only that, but took all of our sins upon himself? Mm -hmm. God, God set the standard of the law before you. And then when he come down here and become a man, he raised the bar. Yeah. Yeah. He said, not only did I live that law, but look what else I did. And he raised the bar of his own righteousness. And then man's going to enter in contention with him. You don't understand. He's going to say, no, I understand perfectly. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I was a man too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You see what man's messing with? What leads to the fall of man. If you read it there, we'll, we'll, we'll pick up with this next week. I've kept you long enough. What you need to understand when you read Romans chapter 1, what Paul, what, what has led to the shape of the world. And man sits down here and they, they blame God. 
I've heard, I've went out and knocked on doors and heard that more times than anything. Yeah. Well, preacher, the way I say it, if God's so good, yeah. why does He let these people get away with this, that, this, and that? Paul's going to address that self righteous hypocrite in Romans chapter 2. Because you, you say that's a mean thing to say. No, he's acting like he's more righteous than God. And the fact that you get mad at me for pointing it out proves whose side you're on. Yeah. The, listen, man, I had a guy baiting up a fishing pole one time. And I was sitting there trying to witness to him. He, said, he went, he went, uh, boy, I see it. If, if God was so good, why does he let all these little kids get raped? Yeah. You know what I said? I said, well, you're evidently so concerned about the little kids, you're getting ready to go fishing. That's a hypocrite. It's a man throwing out his excuses. You think that kind of excuse is going to allow that man to escape in the judgment of God? Yeah. It's not. Paul's going to address him in Romans chapter 2. He said, he said, Thou are inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judges. It's like the man masturbating to pornography every day of the week while he's, while he's blasting the sodomites. Or a man who's who, who, a Republican sitting over here that's had sex with three or four different women that week talking about the homosexuals. Paul said you're without excuse. He said the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. And thinkest thou this, O man, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? He said, okay, okay, you want God to start judging the pedophiles. That's wonderful. But when he starts judging sin, do you think you're going to escape? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. He says, do you really despise God's goodness and forbearance and long-suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance? The fact that he didn't kill Adam in the garden showed he had a plan to save me. Yeah. And the fact that he got Noah on the ark and spared Adam told me God had a plan. And when David committed murder and adultery and God said, I put away your sin, it showed that God had a plan. Mm -hmm. And that plan's been revealed at Calvary. And you reject that righteous gift of God. His righteousness has been revealed. And you reject it. All you have left is the wrath of Almighty God. Mm -hmm. And it, His wrath has been revealed. I've read it. Yeah. Not only the eternal wrath in hell, but the wrath that's about ready to come on this earth during the tribulation period. Mm -hmm. God is going to make the earth empty. Isaiah 24. He maketh the earth empty. Think about it. Blood up to a horse's bridle for over yeah. 200 miles. Yeah. That's the wrath of God coming. And, and we're, going to, we're, going to, we're going to look at Romans chapter 1 some more next week because it reveals the three the three things that God gives man over to. And it, it helps you understand where America's at. Sexual immorality, homosexuality, and reprobation. We're in stage three yeah. Yeah. of apostasy. We're in the final stage of apostasy according to that Bible. And what did it all begin with? They didn't give God the glory as God, but became vain in their imagination. It all began when they rejected the wisdom of Almighty God. Amen. And started trying to know God according to their own wisdom and their own understanding. That's what it leads to. Amen. Amen. So we'll, we'll pick up next week with those things. But let's pray.